you make that better? Well, one thing to think about is the hook. The very first time you get out there, think about that hook. Audience first. Audience first. Focus on the audience the first thing you do, and then bring it back to you. Now, you sort of did that with your back of the audience, but really when you're facing the audience, that's the time to give the hook. Focus on the audience, and then bring them in. The other thing you can do is to pause. Pause is powerful. Pause to the point. Pause to the point, especially during a humorous speech that has a little bit of seriousness to it. It's really great. Isn't it wonderful that a serious speech you're laughing and all of a sudden you say, wait a minute, it wasn't funny. It was actually a good point. And you're sitting there thinking about it, you need a little time to let it sink in, right? Right? A little time to let it sink in. So make sure to pause. And then finally, to really bring the next look, eye contact. One person, one thought around the room. Just make eye contact with somebody, talk to them, talk to somebody else, eye contact all the way around the room. The great thing is all the people around them will think that you're looking at them. So you'll feel like you're looking at the whole room. So eye contact's the other thing. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Certainly, now you know that your job, not that bad. <laughs>
and demonstrating her story by using different spots on the stage. For example, the home, the hospital for the first child, or the hospital for the second child. Another suggestion I thought of was it might help to play roles in the conversations, perhaps with the doctor or the husband, again, if they're guilty, <laughs> or maybe the first child about the second child. Judy's use of body movement was just spectacular in her speech, demonstrating her quite ready to deliver condition. <laughs> And the title of her speech was a real teaser, a real come on, because we didn't quite know what she was talking about, this being a Toastmasters meeting where people deliver all the time. She used a great play on words, the great effect. Julie's wonderful closing, blaming the men in her life, <laughs> brought me to identify with her. Julie, thank you so much, and best wishes on your second delivery. Our next contestant, third contestant, Casey Day. Casey Day, our third contestant. Masters, distinguished guests, if there are any in the crowd, um, and especially Julie, where are you? Raise your hand back there. Uh, Julie, thank you so much for coming up here and being a brave soul on a number of levels to get up here and do your speech for, for this contest. I know it's, it's usually nerve-wracking that you're going to be hearing a lot of evaluations over and over again, which can be tough depending on how thick your skin is, but especially, I want to take a quick check of your pulse on how close you are to see if you're under duress right now from all these evaluations. I'm, I'm worried about you back there. Um, but first off, I just want to say that there's no better um, there's no better topic to come up and do a speech about to engage your audience than something about yourself. And especially something as endearing as, as you know, giving birth to your child and kind of your experience and kind of bringing us into that world. Um, I can tell that, that you're kind of further along within your Toastmaster experience because you do a lot of things extremely well up here uh, when you're giving your, uh, your speech. And so normally within our clubs, we're not used to having microphones up here to talk about. And so um, you handled that really well up here, um, kind of making sure that you were speaking into the mic. Um, there were some times where, you know, it's kind of hard to get used to, to having this when we're so we're taught to use hand gestures, use the room, and things to the best of your ability. Um, but I think you, you took that in flying colors and, and handled the mic extremely well. Um, as well as you continue to have great hand gestures um, within your speech and continue to bring us into your world within there. Um, again, um, your, the topic selection, I, I have to say, was, is, was very good to, to pull, you, pull everybody in um, within here. 
um, as well as you taking on different roles within the world um, that you were kind of bringing us into with your vocal variety and changing as the nurse coming in and telling you that, oh, no, you're gonna have to, um, you're gonna have to wait a little bit longer, or you know, we gotta we gotta make sure everything's good. You're gonna get a C-section. You're like, what? So, and I know, and, and I, I will say, you know, one piece that you may want to work on is is your speech title on that, and that um, there is no such thing as a perfectly average delivery of a baby. So, um, and I know I've been through three, so we've been through that experience. Not a single one was the same. So. Um, you're in for a, a treat with them there. So um, I want to. <laughs> so again, I want to uh, con again congratulate you on multiple levels for coming up here and, and being a contestant, um, as well as the delivery on your your new baby. And I know I wish and hope for a, a perfectly average delivery for you because your delivery up here was anything but average. Thank you so much. Just to mark it out. Number four, Carolyn Nell Anderson. Contestant number four, Carolyn Nell Anderson. story 
and I love following it through with you, but at some time, I wanted a little more organization. I pined a little bit away to get some organization. Maybe I felt like I kind of wanted to see the classic three points. I followed the story, I liked the story, but I wanted to tighten it up just a little bit, a little less. You could tighten up, so a little less of maybe less of a rambling stream, a little more tightened up with a couple of points. But what did you do at the end? You pulled it right back together, talking about the second one, the average, the perfectly normal delivery, and you tied in what at the end? The moon! Because they're not delivering the baby, but they have to be right there. Trust me, everybody wants their husband, their mate, their partner, whoever it is. You want them right there when you're delivering, and you brought them right back in at the end to tie it all together. Thank you, Julie. <coughs> Judges to mark their ballots. Thank you. Contestant number five, Manesh Masawari. Manesh Masawari, contestant number five. Right away you started with a delivery that connected me to your story that why are you coming up with that story and what I'm looking forward for. That humor just got me in the story right away. And you did not stop there. When you took us through the journey, you would keep giving those expressions where I could connect to you because my wife delivered baby just two years back and all the memories just came live to me. <laughs> I still remember two years back on the day of delivery, uh, or two weeks before the delivery, we went to the doctor and the doctor said, nothing yet. And we said, let's go celebrate. And guess where did we go? For Indian buffet. <laughs> 18 hours later, we had the baby in hand. <laughs> I saw that you structured your speech very well, where you took us through your delivery room, giving us chronological order, what you were going through. Uh, and then you're talking about the statistics. However, I thought one thing that could you have done uh, to bring us into the room with you, for example, I know you cannot do too much body expressions here, but, I, but maybe you could do some breathing techniques. I still remember that. <laughs> <laughs> maybe those yoga work bounces, that would have allowed you to come this side of stage, up to this side of audience. Make us sick with that again expression, that's fine along with your voice, come back this side. So use a little bit of room and tell more expressions to make it more dramatic. You had room there, that's why. Otherwise, I like that because you were talking about perfect average delivery, you talked about those statistics which makes it perfectly average. For example, you wanted to bring those 98% women who deliver in hospital, those 70% uh, women who takes, <coughs> who gives natural birth, uh, etc. And in the end, you summarize it well that how do you want your next delivery to be? So amazing job in uh, start beginning and taking us along to the ride and giving us the region what you expect in your average delivery. With that, I would just say one thing that because your humor, sense of humor and timing is so great, I would have loved to hear this speech in humorous speech contest. So maybe you want to consider that in future. 
right on Condos Castle. Our last contestant, contestant number six, Dan Ray. Dan Ray, contestant number six. Thank you, Madam Contest Master. Fellow Toastmasters, honored guests, and especially Cynthia. Cynthia, where are you? Cynthia. Sorry, you're Cynthia. Julie, where are you? <laughs> Julie's back here, and especially Julie. Thank you so much for your speech. I noticed that you have superhuman capabilities this evening, and those superhuman capabilities are not in your amazing reveal, turning around to the audience at the beginning of your speech, they're in the fact that you get to hear and read my mind. As an evaluator and as a Toastmaster, you have the opportunity to give speeches, but even more importantly from my perspective, you get to read the mind of the person that writes or gives your, your oral evaluation. I loved the reveal, I loved your statistics, and I loved the fact that I had to really dig to think of something that I could suggest that you change in your speech. The thing that I thought of was the 98.6% that I believe was the births in hospital was said enough that I remembered it. But some of the other statistics that you mentioned, I believe it was 70% give females give a natural birth and 60 something percent get an epidural. I would have loved to have something to reference those statistics. So maybe, even if you don't want to put the whole statistic up, but have a number on either a chart or a, a slide or something else, would be a powerful way, maybe just to even pass those out as handouts and then explain what the actual number means or percentage means. I also love the fact that you're giving this two weeks before your delivery date. <laughs> Having two children of my own, I want to pass along some advice we got from friends before we had our second child about how to deal with the fact that our son was going to have a little sister. And Julie, the advice we were given was that the newborn should give a present to your child that's already with you. And I believe that's a girl, correct? So the, the son, the unborn son, gives a present to his older sister and you tell the older sister that's from your little brother. Well, that's the advice I got, and I also want to share you kind of the outcome of that with our children. <laughs> our son was asked, there's about five years between our children, our son was asked on his fifth birthday by my wife, Sam, what would you like on your cake? And our son is obsessed with trains, and he's obsessed with tornadoes. So he said, I want to have a train on my cake, Mom. I love trains. And I want to have a tornado on my cake. I thought, you know, these are all given things. And I want to have a baby girl sucked up by a tornado. <laughs> so hopefully the present works out better for you than apparently it did with our five-year-old. Thank you very much. Please stay silent.
Island until the judges complete their ballots. Please, no one is to leave the room until all the ballots have been collected. Please remain silent. Ready to go to the fall conference? Yay. Yay. It's November 15th. It will be at the Holiday Inn, William Till. I want audience participation with this. So when I say Holiday Inn, I want you to say William Till twice. Let's try it. Holiday Inn? William, William Till, William, William Till. Till. Great. One more time. Holiday Inn? William, William Till, William, William Till. Till. Yes, that's where the fall conference will be. It will kick off at 7 o'clock with the Achievers Breakfast, 8 o'clock with the Banner Parade, 9 o'clock with the Evaluation Contest, 
The business meeting will be at 10 o'clock, and educational sessions. It will be Joan Moore with the keynote at lunch, and then we will have the red carpet celebration. So how many of you are working on your educational goals? Woo, yay! Yes, we will have a great time. We will have lunch, and we will have dinner with, let me read it. <laughs> Johnny Campbell, win the crowd. So you do not want to miss this. And then we will also have the humor speech contest. So the winners of tonight's contest, the first place winners will represent the fall conference November 15th at the Holiday Inn. Thank you. Thank you. I have exactly 701. We will have, is the 10 minute break still fine? 10 minute? Everybody back here in 10 minutes to begin the humorous speech contest. Woo